No matter how hard our volunteers try, they can hardly frown. <laughs> You have beautiful, youthful skin. Why would you consider doing something like this? My family, especially on Dad's side, they've all got killer wrinkles. Yeah. Um, and then also, I've got heaps of friends at work that have had it done, and all their skin looks nice and smooth and clear. You know, we live my whole day on Zoom now, and I've just, you know, you don't really look at anyone else in the meeting, you just look at yourself. Ah, and so this is a pandemic thing? Yeah. Have you told your kids? I have told them, yes. They think I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to look weird after it. Mm. Ginger. Each participant receives standard anti-wrinkle doses in their frown lines and crow's feet. That's amazing. Mm. Super fast, right? Mm. You feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Whoops! A little bit of blood, but that's nothing. Mm. Yeah. That was big. The yeah. deep. <laughs> Is it a hard discussion to have? Because, you know, we tell our kids, you're perfect and beautiful the way you are. You know, is it, yeah. is it sending a mixed message? Well, I wasn't born with wrinkles, was I? So. <laughs> <laughs> and do you spend much time on, on Instagram or TikTok? A fair amount of time, um, but I'm slowly pulling back. You know, once you like one post that Instagram starts mm -hmm. to um, show you more of the same thing, and I think that but it's exhausting. What's exhausting about it? Seeing a lot of people spend a lot of money getting Botox and fillers to, you know, be a Kardashian and it's just a bit of a cycle that's not very positive on your brain. Like, even if you're not thinking about it all the time, it's subconscious. Recent research suggests that paralysing our faces with anti-wrinkle treatments could have a significant impact on how we interact with others. On the surface, our first-time anti-wrinklers are enjoying a new, glowing complexion. But what's happening behind their frozen brows? Now, no matter how hard our volunteers try, they can hardly frown. It is so good to see you all again. I don't know, some of you might be in a bad mood, but I can't tell, because you can't frown. You're next. <laughs> oh, I already get Botox, so there's nothing, <laughs> nothing new here, nothing to see here. <laughs> but you have done this before. You know the drill. OK, your time starts now. Our participants are again trying to correctly name facial expressions in a repeat of the three baseline tests. First as a group, then in pairs, to see if the benefits of a smoother complexion may come at a cost. One of the key ways we interpret the motions in others is by copying what we see. The theory is that when we see a facial expression, we spontaneously mimic that. And it's thought that that process of mimicking a facial expression actually allows us to kind of recreate in our own body, the emotion that someone is feeling and then that enables us to recognise the emotions. With the tasks complete, how do they feel they went the second time round? I actually found it harder to sort of differentiate what emotions are feeling. I struggle to differentiate between the mouth and the eyes. Um, so it took me a little bit longer, I think, the second time. I felt it took me longer um, to analyse the true emotions of, of the faces that I saw. And I don't know why. So it seems that anti-wrinkle treatments around the eyes and forehead have had an impact. But what does the data show? OK, so I'm dying to find out what the results are. How did our frozen friends do? Our participants performed 5% worse um, following Botox. OK, test two. They're about 200 milliseconds slower to recognise um, facial expressions. Our participants were 5% less accurate identifying emotions and 20% slower at labelling the expressions. So test three where the faces popped up really far, like really quickly, how did they go there? 
what we found is that they're actually less accurate recognising those facial expressions and the difficulty seems to be pronounced for recognising um, negative facial expressions like anger. Okay, so now that they've had Botox, they're less likely to accurately identify expressions and they are slower in their responses to expressions. Yeah, that's what, that's what the data suggests. The results indicate that injectables could have a significant impact on how we interact with others. Because when you can't read someone's expression properly, it can also affect your ability to feel the related emotion. We seem to, at least temporarily, lose our ability to empathise.